The 2023 NFL Draft has came and went, and there's no doubt that the Philadelphia Eagles were one of the biggest winners, if not the biggest winner of the draft in the entire league, as whether it be by drafting guys or by making a trade, the Eagles were able to add a lot of quality players in this draft, many of which can have an impact right away and also be building blocks for the team in the future. But who are the players that the Eagles got through this draft and how much of an impact could they have this season and moving into the future? Well, we're going to talk all about that in this video today, but before we do that, make sure you go down and subscribe to this channel for more consistent Philadelphia Eagles content coming throughout this entire offseason and moving into next season. You're not going to want to miss it, so make sure you subscribe, turn on notifications, and drop a like on this video if you do enjoy. Now, with all that being said, let's get into the video. This offseason has definitely been an eventful one for the Philadelphia Eagles. I mean, first, we had free agency in which the Eagles lost a lot of their key players and starters from the 2022 NFC Championship winning team, but the Eagles still did a pretty solid job of retaining some key players and adding other solid ones to replace those that departed. But still, the Eagles had some holes in their roster that they had to fill, which made this NFL draft a very crucial one for the Eagles. And it's safe to say that they absolutely nailed it, as not only did they fill some of these holes, but they also added players that can have an impact right away, as well as moving down the road into the future. So the first guy that the Eagles acquired through the draft is none other than Georgia defensive tackle Jalen Carter. And honestly, it's just incredible that the Eagles were even able to get Carter in the first place because I think he was unanimously considered to be one of the top overall players in this draft class. Some people even had him ranked number one, and he fell all the way to the Eagles at number nine. Where the Eagles then obviously traded up one spot with the Chicago Bears to snag him, which is just incredible value. Getting a guy that's ranked that high at number nine is just insane. And Jalen Carter is just an absolute beast. He has all the physical tools to succeed at the NFL level. He's got size, strength, athleticism. I mean, Nick Sirianni mentioned that he did a windmill dunk in a horse game against him, which is kind of funny and doesn't really have anything to do with football. But still, the guy is just a freak athlete. And also, from what it sounds like, he has a great love for the game of football, which is obviously very important and honestly I think this was probably the best case scenario for Jalen Carter I mean obviously he fell in the draft because of the incident he was involved in back in January but I think him getting drafted to the Eagles was probably the best team for him to go to because for one they have an unbelievable culture they have some great leaders in that organization whether it be players or coaches and he's coming to play with a bunch of his former teammates who we're going to talk about plenty of those guys later but just one guy for example in Jordan Davis he was a really good influence on him in their time together at Georgia and also Nicobe Dean's obviously there as well so I think he's really set up for success and the Eagles organization knew what they signed up for in drafting Carter and they know that they have to guide him in the right direction and help him you know become the best player and person that he can be so I honestly think that he set up perfectly to redeem himself and to fulfill his potential here in Philadelphia and I think he honestly has a chance to be a franchise cornerstone for this Eagles team if he becomes who they believe he can become as a player and again as a person this year I expect him to be used rotationally I do think Jordan Davis and Fletcher Cox will be the team starters at defensive tackle but I just want to see what he's able to do in the role he's given this year and then I think once Fletcher Cox leaves probably I would say probably after this season Fletcher Cox is going to end up leaving then I think Jalen Carter will step in he'll start and he'll have a much bigger role moving forward and I think from there you'll start to see him progress even more and become a star in this league so overall I give this pick an A plus I absolutely love it for the Eagles now the next guy that the Eagles got in the draft was edge rusher from Georgia Nolan Smith and this was such a great pick for the Eagles because Nolan Smith was a guy who was ranked as a top 15 overall prospect and I saw a bunch of times where he was mocked to the Eagles at number 10 overall but the Eagles were able to get him with their second first round pick at number 30 which is obviously incredible value and Nolan Smith is another guy like Jalen Carter who I think will come in right away next season and have a solid impact as a rotational guy but you know after next season and as the years move forward he's going to have a bigger role and I think he can develop into a franchise cornerstone for the Eagles defense if he's developed correctly I really think he can be a great NFL player he's got all the potential to become that he's obviously a crazy athlete he put on a show at the NFL combine posting a 4-3-9 40 yard dash and 42 inch vertical which are obviously insane numbers for an edge rusher and his athleticism translate to his game as well as he's incredibly quick off the edge and he uses his speed to beat tackles and just get to the quarterback effectively and you know obviously like I said he's got some developing to do but any player coming in just immediately being drafted is not going to be a finished product and it's the Eagles job to get the best out of him and I really think that with the Eagles he's in a perfect situation to develop he obviously has a guy in Brandon 
Brandon Graham, who's had a lot of success in this league being an edge rusher, and I think he's got him to mentor him. He also was a guy in Hassan Reddick who I've seen him compared to a lot. They play very similarly. He can learn a lot from him as well. I think, like I said, he's in the perfect situation to develop, and of course, it doesn't hurt that he was drafted alongside Jalen Carter and another one of his former Georgia teammates, which we're going to talk about a little bit later. That obviously is only going to help the chemistry moving forward. And again, with the potential that he has and the value that they got him for, I really think Nolan Smith was a great pick for the Philadelphia Eagles, and I'm a huge fan of it. Now, the next player that the Eagles got in the draft, they acquired early in the third round with the 65th overall pick, getting Alabama offensive tackle Tyler Steen. And overall, I think this is a pretty good pick for the Eagles because number one, obviously, they lost their starting right guard from last season in Isaac Sayamalo to the Pittsburgh Steelers in free agency, so that was a position of need for them. Now, some people thought that Eagles 2022 second round pick Cam Jurgens could come in and fill that spot. Now, not saying he couldn't do that, but I definitely think it's good to add some competition for him in Tyler Steen, and I think if we're being honest, Steen is probably a better long-term fit at the guard position anyway, because even though he played tackle in college, he has all the physical tools to play guard at the NFL level. He's 6'6", he's got some great strength and good athleticism as well, and the Eagles pretty much have already said he's going to play guard for them, plus I think the Eagles see Cam Jurgens as more of their long-term solution at the center position once Jason Kelsey retires, so they probably just want to develop him more there, which I completely agree with, and I think that's where they want to have him moving forward, and I think that Steen can be a good guard in this league, so if I had to guess next season, Steen would probably start for them at the guard position. Now, obviously, that's not set yet. We don't know what's going to happen between now and training camp or now in the start of the regular season, but as it looks right now, if you just look at their depth chart, I would guess that Steen is the team's starting right guard next season, and I think he can have a lot of success, obviously, playing alongside some of the best offensive linemen in the league and being coached by the best offensive line coach in the league. And he also played at a great school in Alabama. So overall, I think this is a very good pick for the Eagles and I'm really happy about it. And then just after picking Steen, the Eagles had the very next pick at number 66 overall and they took a safety out of Illinois in Sydney Brown. Now, for a lot of people, I think this was probably the Eagles' most questionable choice of the draft because the Eagles did need a safety and Brown obviously fits that bill. But I think some people thought there were some better options at that position still Still on the board but however I do think at the end of the day that Sidney Brown is a good pick for the Eagles because from what I've heard he's just a really good player and person he's a great athlete he's a high character guy he brings the energy on the field and Brown is also a very versatile player. I mean, he's a safety that is able to play up in the box, which is obviously good because Sean Desai values safeties that can do that very highly in his defensive system, but he's also able to get back into pass coverage and defend the pass very, very well. He had the third highest pass coverage grade in the 2022 college football season, and he's also able to defend the run very, very well, and he had six interceptions in 2022, which was the most out of any player in the Big Ten, and he had some good accomplishments in his time at Illinois as well, as he was a first team and third team all Big Ten selection at various points. The only problem with Sidney Brown is he's just a little bit undersized at 5'9", but at the end of the day, it sounds like the Eagles really, really liked him. They came out after the draft and they said they were thrilled to get him and they had him marked as a red star player. So I'm going to trust them. I think it's a good pick. I don't know how much impact I see him having next season or how much he's going to play, but I definitely think he has the potential to become a good player. So overall, I like the pick. And then the next player the Eagles got was potentially the steal of the entire draft as they made a move to get up to the third pick in the fourth round by trading a 2024 third round pick to the Houston Texans so that they could select Georgia cornerback Keely Ringo. And Ringo was ranked as the number one corner prospect before the 2022 college football season. That's what they said on the broadcast after he was picked by the Eagles. And he was graded as a second round talent headed into this year's draft and the Eagles were able to get him in the fourth round. And he's a guy that's got the physical tools and just the skill set to succeed in the NFL. I mean, He's a bigger cornerback at six foot two, 207 pounds, and he's got some good ball skills. He had 19 passes defended and four picks in his two seasons at Georgia. And he's a physical player and he's able to use his body to his advantage in pass coverage. And he has all the tools to play safety if that's what the Eagles would want him to do. And he's only 20 years old. He's only going to get better from here. He's just a really talented guy that the Eagles got for absolutely insane value. Potentially, like I said, the steal of the draft, having him fall from, you know, some people even had him being picked as a late first round guy and he fell all the way to the fourth round and the Eagles were able to select him. That is great value and I give this pick an A plus for the Eagles, potentially the steal of the draft. 
draft. Now the next player that the Eagles got through the draft was not actually a draft pick because they went out and they made a trade with the Detroit Lions to get running back DeAndre Swift. And I thought that this was an incredible trade for the Eagles because for one, they got him for a very low price as they swapped seventh round picks with the Lions and they also gave up a 2025 20, fourth round pick. And Swift is a guy that's not gonna cost the Eagles very much or hurt them at all really against the cap as he's on the last year of his rookie contract with a base salary of $1.77 million. And Swift is a guy who is immensely talented and is very good when he's on the field. I mean, I think he's a star caliber player when he's healthy. It's just a matter of, can he stay healthy? Because throughout the course of Swift's entire career with the Lions, he's constantly had to deal with injuries and they've limited his production in the amount of games that he's been able to play. So I think if he can stay healthy, it's gonna turn out to be an insane trade for the Eagles because he's just a really good player. I mean, he's got an elite skill set. He's quick, he's shifty, he's elusive, he's got great vision. I just see him having a lot of success with the Eagles, especially playing behind the number one offensive line in the league and alongside a guy like Jalen Hurts who can only help you as a running back because of his running ability. And I think, like I said, again, if he can stay healthy, he's going to have a great year for the Eagles. I went more into depth on this trade in my last video, so I'll put that at the end of the video if you want to go check that out. But yeah, overall, I absolutely love this trade and it's another great move by Howie Roseman to get a player for great value that's going to come in and probably have a pretty big impact next season. Now, the next player that the Eagles got in the draft was the quarterback from Stanford, Tanner McKee, as they got him in the sixth round, which makes sense because the Eagles are a team that likes to draft quarterbacks later in the draft to become potential future backups. Now, hopefully Tanner McKee doesn't play at all for the Eagles this season, unless it's like the last game of the season where Jalen Hurts and Mariota are both resting because the game doesn't mean anything. And if I'm being completely honest, I don't see Tanner McKee really becoming a great quarterback in the league, but I do think he has the potential to be the Eagles backup moving forward. I mean, that's probably why they picked him because they only have Marcus Mariota on a one-year deal, or maybe they just want to have him in there as their third stringer moving forward. I'm not 100% sure, but again, it does make sense. The Eagles do draft quarterbacks late. I think it's really funny because I saw Daniel Jeremiah had compared him to Nate Sudfeld, so now it makes a lot more sense. So this pick was nothing crazy, but I do think it was a solid pick to get another quarterback and who can be a potential backup for Jalen Hurts moving forward. And then the last player that the Eagles drafted was Mauro Ojomo, the defensive end out of Texas, who, if I'm being honest, probably won't play much much this season, but I do think that this was a pretty good pick because, you know, I heard that Daniel Jeremiah had apparently ranked him as the 111th best player in the draft. People had him as a fourth round value, and the Eagles were able to get him late in the seventh round at 249th overall, so... You know, that's a really good value pick, and I heard that he's a really good player in terms of stopping the run as well. So overall, I think this is a solid pick, adds more depth to that defensive line, which obviously the Eagles love to do. And I could see him developing a little bit and maybe becoming a good rotational defensive lineman at some point in his career. So yeah, I do like this pick here late in the seventh round. And then of course, the Eagles got a bunch of undrafted free agents, which I mean, there's a lot of them. I'm not gonna list every single one of them, but there are some pretty notable names. The most notable in most people's minds being the cornerback from Alabama, Eli Ricks, who, you know, back in 2020 when he was playing for LSU was considered to be one of the better corners in college football. And then, you know, in 2021, 2022, he was limited with injuries, but still he's a very good player when he's on the field. In 2022, he didn't allow a single touchdown in 233 coverage snaps. It's just a matter of him staying healthy. And Ricks also has the physical tools to be successful in this league. He's a bigger corner at six foot two with long arms. And a lot of people have had him being a day two pick in this draft and obviously he slipped he didn't get drafted and the Eagles were able to scoop him up I think they got him for incredible value this could potentially be a steal I really think he could turn into a solid player if he's developed correctly and he can stay healthy so I'm really excited about that and then some of the other notable names the Eagles got in terms of undrafted free agents were Joseph Nyata out of Clemson he's a bigger physical wide receiver you got Michigan State linebacker Ben Van Summeren who has some potential and then you also have punter Ty Zentner who I think the Eagles really need a punter and I'm glad that they were able to pick one up here. He went to Kansas State. I think that that's a good addition as well. So overall, if you just look at everything that the Eagles did throughout the course of this draft, this was really an incredible haul for the Eagles. And I think you could definitely say that the Eagles had the best draft out of any team. You could definitely make that argument. And now if you look at the Eagles roster, the way it is now after the draft is over, I think it's safe to say that there's about as much talent as there was last year. The only difference is they're getting younger. And I really think that the Eagles are setting themselves up not only to go on another Super Bowl run in 2023, but to have continued success moving into the future. And it seems to me like we're entering an era of Eagles football 
that has the potential to be among the best in their history. That might sound like an exaggeration, but I really think that's the truth. But yeah, that's pretty much all I got for this video, guys. What do you think of everything that the Eagles did in the draft? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss when any videos go up. Also, drop a like on this video if you did enjoy. And if you want to watch the video that's discussing the DeAndre Swift trade more in depth, you can go watch it right here. Now, with all that being said, that's pretty much all I got for this one, guys. So thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.